computers are all the same size. The capacity that this was hold when it was whole and complete is 4,000. Now, we're only seeing one small section of it. Now, the area that we're in is the area in front of the stage. The stage should be further back here, behind us, somewhere around the path area. Uh, which means that the semicircle continued a little bit further around this way and continued a little bit further around this way. The seats. You see there are some of the stones of the steps that led to all of the seats. They were pinched, stolen, because we're in a, a very large area that was constantly being built and rebuilt, not only conquered and everything else. And uh, if cities moved, or the capital, the important centers moved from one area to another, And there are a number of baths here, like these uh, installations here in front of us. We have two of them here. There are more all the way around. These are called mikveh ops. The mikveh, M-I-K-V-E, mikveh. Mikveh is the bath for ritual purification. <coughs> for ritual purification by total immersion. Now, if you open the book of the partial re uh, restoration work, looking from scratch to give us an idea of what a Roman villa looked like, of which the floor was the main room. Would be able to, uh, to say, this is how wealthy I am, take a look what I've been And uh, you can understand that if you have this on the floor, you don't need any carpet. <coughs> right? You wouldn't want to have any carpet on the floor. Now, the way the mosaics are made is that each piece of stone is hand-cut and hand-faced. Uh, there is no painting. This is the actual color of the stones. Oh. Right, so, uh, and they would go to great lengths to get the right color, and um, that's not stone. That's solidified marble, that's all. The, apparently, uh, according to the uh, archaeologists, this was one of the main streets in the city. Not necessarily the main street, but one of the main streets in the city. And the center part here is where you would have the traffic, horses, the carts, and so on. And in fact, what's wonderful is that you can see how the stones have been worn away. Mm -hmm. uh, because this road was used for hundreds of years. Now, what happens is that when you get one empire replacing another empire, you don't always have the structure. For example, once uh, you get the, the Roman Empire becoming the Byzantine Empire, the culture remains the same, the people remain the same, what you have is a change of religion. It's when the Byzantines is when the Romans become Christians.
get me, Jimmy.
We must be willing to submit. We must be willing to wait for as long as necessary to do that which we have really been called to do. For most of us, the really important thing in our life, it will take a lifetime. But as Watchman Nee said, to be used of God once in a lifetime, once, is worth a lifetime of living. When his ministry did begin, he did not head straight back to Cephas, as I speak of it. In fact, in his public ministry, he did not go back there at all. Johanna, the wife of Herod's treasurer, she went with him, supplied some of Herod's money to finance his journeys throughout the 203, 204 cities in Galilee. But he didn't go back to the main village as would have been our strategy, start in the great urban center that controlled all the 203 and 204 cities of Galilee. No, he went to a place that could have been called Scott Depot. <laughs> in fact, his first ministry was to a little village. His first appearance was to that of Cana. And from there, he set out over the countryside to preach that God's kingdom was at hand and that our allegiance should be unto him who made us, created us, and cares for our soul forever and forever. There's so much to be learned from his waiting. There's so much to be learned from his relationship between here and Cephas. Three and a half miles took him an hour to get there. He and Joseph may have worked daily, most probably did, to build the wooden floors of the theater and the nice places in the palaces. He saw the decadence. He saw the misplaced values. Yet I cannot but con contrast his ministries and John. John was the greatest of the prophets, except for the least in the kingdom of God. But it was not Jesus who called Herod the fox to tax. He did call him the fox. But it was John the Baptist. And for that, John lost his head. Jesus had more important things to declare. Morals, they were clear. More than one wife, it was plain. To take another man's wife was breaking the Ten Commandments. And yet our Lord himself did not call Herod to pass. I once heard Brother Helm say, Son, be careful about your protest movements. Wrong or right, God is not in most of them. I've never said this before nor I have ever revealed what he said. The important thing is that you and I be about the master's business and not worry about strategy. Sepphoris, Tiberias, Jerusalem, or Caesarea. But rather the Scott Depot or the Barker or the little place where God has called us. For that little place has more power now and in the days to come, if God is leading, Amen. to bring about what needs to be brought about, simply because God is God, and he needs only you and me to submit to him entirely. I'm thankful for Brother John McAdams and his leadership through the years. He was called to be secretary. There's authority implied in that position, though John has never imposed himself upon us. But I want you to know in the four and a half years that I've worked with him up there, not once has he acted in an abrasive manner toward me. And always have I been glad to 
be under his ministry there in the city of Parker. I just wanted to say that because I've enjoyed so much uh, his tenderness and his leadership and his kindness. One other thing I was thinking about, why did Jesus have to wait so long? Well, in a sermon that I preached not long ago called the, Earth, called the Urbanized Christ, which was inspired by the new dig uh, here, uh, not new, but just coming out in America, especially in this book, Jesus and the Forgotten City. I remembered that at 30 years of age, Jesus was allowed to read something that all Jewish men read but not until that age. The Song of Solomon. It seems to me that at the age of 30, being an obedient Jew, as he read that wonderful book, he found you and he found me. And having at that age found his pride, he set out to search for her and to die for her. Severus, she's in ruins. Herod is long gone. But the people that Jesus looked for are still here. And we rejoice that he chose to do what is eternal. And he waited long enough to get started. Let us do the same.
this opportunity today. We look to you. We pray, Father, for strength, healing, and deliverance, continued protection, and help for thy servant tonight. Keep our eyes upon you. Keep us out of trouble. Keep us out of difficulty. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
few other uh, stories.
one place he told me to get on board and he stayed on the shore and as they began to row the bible says the wind was contrary to them many times the lord will give us an assignment it seems like everything will be against it the storm came they were out on the sea and they thought they were going to die it's amazing when they looked up they saw what they thought was a ghost but it was jesus they were afraid of the very thing the very person that had come to rescue them the wonderful words that thrill me so much as i read the story about the storm sea and jesus walking on the water was peter now a lot of people identify with different people in the bible some of us identify with peter <laughs> peter would get stirred so quickly he would do things impossibly he would do things with his zeal many times would get ahead of his knowledge peter hauled out across the water if it be you bid me to come the king james says literally what he was saying to jesus is give me a word we all have read read the scriptures we've heard sunday school teachers preachers preach about peter walking on the water but I've come to the conclusion that he did not walk on the water. It's impossible to walk on the water. If you don't think so, we will stand here and watch you try. <laughs> I don't believe he did. I don't believe he walked on some secret stones. What I'm telling you is he told the Lord to give me a word. If you give me a word, I will come to you. He didn't jump overboard and start going across the water on his own. He left the boat when the Lord said the word, come. He walked on the word our lives we cannot do anything we can't walk on water we can't do anything we must walk on the word when the lord gives us a word it doesn't matter how impossible it may look we can walk on it Amen. we can live by it and we can walk on it you've got to have a, a word from the lord no matter what the situation is i believe god can give you a word peter heard the word he had told the lord if you give me a word i'll come Okay? When he got hold of the word, simple word, he didn't need a commentary to explain what the word come means. He had to believe it. He had to believe the word. You need a word, then you have to have faith in the word. Your faith must have a basis. We're on a ship that's on the water. We're being supported by this ship, by God's grace, that's on the water. You must have your faith based on something. It must have a foundation. Mark, the 11th chapter, verse 22, Jesus said, have faith in God. I've read many books. There's books in libraries. There's books in bookstores, Christian bookstores, that tell you to have faith in your faith. You know, have faith in your faith. That's no foundation. You have to have faith in God. Peter heard the word. It was a simple word. The Lord speaks to us on the level where we are we have children on board the lord doesn't speak to these children with phd language he speaks to us wherever we are whatever our background is it will be simple it will be you'll be able to understand it very plainly he heard the word he believed the word the basis of his belief his faith was jesus our basis is jesus number three lots of people lots of people have scriptures they have them on the refrigerator they have them on their mirrors they can flip through the scriptures they can give you a word from the lord they say they believe the word from the lord the third thing you must have obedience i believe faith has to have proof you must prove your faith we go forward in, in services in the states and we have healing we anoint people we pray for them according to the scriptures time and time again we don't prove our faith james says faith without works I don't change the scriptures, but I say faith without obedience is dead. You can have faith, you can have scriptures, but you must have obedience. He had to get off the boat. Are you with me? So many times we're going to services, we're going to meetings, we're reading scriptures, we're memorizing scriptures, and we're talking about faith, we read books on faith, but we've got to do the third step, we've got to get off the boat. The boat's safe. The boat's safe. I don't see anyone else getting off the boat with him. I mean, the boat was full of apostles. And that's the only ones that were on the boat were the apostles. They weren't just little guys like me and you. They were all apostles. But he was the only one that was getting off the boat. Are you with me? Yes, sir. You can talk it, and you can have meetings, and you can have services. But 
someday, somehow, somewhere, you've got to get the word, believe the word, and you've got to prove the word by obedience, and that means get off the boat. Your faith is not worth anything, the word's not worth anything, until you put it to the test, and that's when you get off the boat. And uh, he was out there by himself. Now, I know most people get real negative real quick. They say, yeah, but he sunk. But he took more steps than anyone else. He <laughs> <laughs> get negative real quick. What's that? Oh, yeah, old Pete. He got out there, you know, and he sunk. But he did take some steps. How many steps have you taken? <laughs> See, we're so afraid that we're going to fall, we're going to fall, we're going to go under, that we won't take any steps. We won't take any steps. It's safer to be on board even though the ship's going to sink. See, there was still a storm coming. The storm was still there. He didn't walk across the peaceful shore. He walked across the water with the storm going on. Yes, he started to sink when he got his focus wrong. When he began to look at the situation, he focused on the problem instead of the promise. The promise was come. He began to look at the situation instead of the Savior, and immediately he began to sink. Wouldn't it have been wonderful if the other men on the ship would have began to, to holler out at him words of encouragement? Yeah. Yeah. Keep looking at Jesus. Oh, yeah. Keep looking at I tell you what, it's a sight how people who are launching out and walking out and leaving the boat, so many times we, who are still on the boat, we won't say things to encourage them. We'll say, are you sure this is a word from the Lord? And then there's three angels around you to give you, have you felt the shudder? Have you felt the wind? Has there been flapping of angels wings around you? Sometimes when you get a word, no one else gets it but you. And I know that's dangerous. I know you need confirmation and you need submission and you need to be under authority. But sometimes you just get a word and there's no one around and you just launch out. But when you're out there just trying, endeavoring to walk on the word, it sure is nice to have someone to say, hang in there, be encouraged. Keep looking to Jesus. Keep your faith focused on Jesus. He did sing. And I will have to raise my hand and say, I have sunk too. But all we had to do was say, Jesus, save me. Deliver me. Now the Lord rebuked him, and I've been rebuked. <laughs> and I've done some rebuking. But the Lord, even though he rebuked him, reached down and lifted him up. Hallelujah! Him out. Hey, get out there on the, on the Word. Walk on the Word. Believe the Word. Have faith in the Word. Make sure it's from the Lord. Then get out there and walk on it. And if you start sinking a little bit, keep your faith focused. The Lord will help you if you ask Him to help you. Don't be afraid when you're sinking to ask for help. The craziest thing, it's not, it's not bad to be down. It's bad to stay down. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he, he rises again. I keep telling my people, hey, it's awful that you're falling. But the worst thing is stay down there. Get up. Get up. Dust yourself off. Get back in the game. Mm, I'm so glad we're on a team. And in baseball especially, if you strike out, they don't kick you off the team. You go to the end of the bench. And you wait your turn. Pretty soon you'll work yourself back up. And you get a bat again. You get a bat again. Stay faithful. Stay in the Word. Walk on the word, believe the word, and when God tells you to get off the boat, make sure it's the Lord. But when He says to do it, get out there and walk with faith. And if you're sinking, you know, I know when you're on these trips, you know, sometimes you don't know if you're in Galilee. Some of my people say, How close is Jerusalem? They think it's right around the corner. You don't even know where you are half the time. It's the truth. You're in one church out of one church into another church, and pretty soon one stump looks like another stump. <laughs> To be honest with you, you know, this stone looks like that stone, one mountain looks like another mountain. <laughs> Sometimes in life you don't know where you are. It just seems like it's a whirlwind. It's just a whirlwind. Hang to stay faithful. And if you see someone that looks like they may be sinking or getting their faith focused on the wrong thing, give them a word of encouragement. Hold on. Keep looking at Jesus. And you be encouraged. You be encouraged. The devil will buffet you and tell you you're not a part, you're not this, you're not that. Just rebuke you. Keep on being faithful. Keep trying to encourage those who have launched out. And one day when you launch out, someone will encourage you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the Sea of Galilee. We thank you, Lord, in the storms of our life. 
We're so thankful that we've we had you come walking to us time and time again. Thank you, Lord, you walk on top of the storm. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege and the opportunity of believing your word. We have the opportunity of obeying your word. Bless each one. Bless those who are struggling. Bless those, Lord, who seem to feel out there sinking. May they be encouraged and may they be lifted right now in the name of Jesus. And help us to all to realize we're on a team. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
in a moment was made to see. The lame was made whole by the matchless skill of the stranger of Galilee. And I felt I could love him for And tender was he. I claimed him that day as my Savior. This stranger of Galilee. And he
Does it even hardly see one day we shall see him face to face and bow down to Christ? Give him all the glory because he's worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be saved. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Take a look. He's so good to me. I take I'm losing my voice. He's so good to me. I was in the I came to down to say it in Forgive me, my great time. Listen, let's sing the chorus. There is a song in my heart today, something I never heard. There is a song.
that side, please, because it's too hard to get everybody in. This morning, uh, Pastor. See where that golden dome is, Susie? Uh -huh. Underneath that is the rock where Abraham walked up and Isaac. But now it's a Muslim. Uh -huh. It's a very spot. I believe Muhammad was
this cup from me, but uh, nevertheless, not my will for yours is to be done. Years and years and years, it's still nothing happened. How he had his hope was still intact. Yes, Hard for me to imagine. Nevertheless, back again. Never gave day, up. Time and time again, because there was a legend. There was a superstition. And that is exactly what it was. That from time to time. Down the bottom. See it. Go to the bathroom. That's my level right now. I think that arch, some of the arch. The inner lining was bleeding. The doctors didn't want us to take him. He was healed right up there. They were so shocked, Zalaco that it uh, caused him to believe, it caused him to believe, really. He says, I've never seen anything like this. Yes. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. One who was there, who had been invalid for 38 years, when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred while I am trying to get in. Or while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was the Sabbath. And I'll not read the other part. There was a little controversy there, but he took up his mat and he walked. And our Keith was healed right here. 
Like I, I want to I want to be mindful now. If if you're if you're not touched at this spot, something happened to her. For we went home and was in a service following our pilgrimage. She was to be operated on the next day. And the Lord suddenly came upon me and I said, God will hear my prayer for healing. And she came into an altar prayer as did several. And we laid hands on her and prayed and a, a tumor him, came out of her that night. And so the next day she said, I gotta be x-rayed because I want to be sure. And do you know the doctor could was astounded. It was gone. So he, he can do it here. He may do it as we go, or he may do it on the airplane or home. See, he chooses a spot, but this is an important spot right here. We're going to anoint Pastor Steve and pray for Christopher. And hey, where's Pastor Steve? Mac, would you come? Where are you? All right. Let me say a word first. Yes, would you please? All right. 20 years ago in December, that's last December. 20 years ago in December? That's the day that the chief was healed and Ruth was healed uh, consequently. Yes. I was standing right up on that little edge right up there. Brother Helm pointed his finger at me and said, be healed in the name of the Lord. Glory to As if he didn't know what to I had been carrying a 20-year sinus congestion. 20 years sinus that I congestion. I lived with for all that time. Mm -hmm. and you know, when we left here, I didn't feel anything at the time, in the moment. He but I accepted it by faith. Accepted it by faith. And a 20 I, year sinus I condition. I left there, I resisted Satan. He started out through there. And my head started draining. His and head started awful draining. All this mess of stuff come out of my head, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, Eunice gave me all of her Kleenex and I said, give them all to me. I'm going to stop here. You can go. Okay, I'll get you. Let that lady through right there, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. It was a dry, dusty day. That's dry, worst, dusty day. The worst kind of weather for the sun's condition. Made no difference. The Lord healed me, and I've been healed ever since. And the only thing that happens to me now is when I get the, that headache come back on me, and I have to pray for Brother Helm to get it drop. That happened the next day. <laughs> yes, sir. We were coming down. It's wonderful to know. Down to Tiberius, and you asked me to pray in the yes, bus. Sir. Yes, sir. I prayed for Brother Helm, and, and uh, the headache was coming back. I prayed for Brother Helm, and he, and uh, it happened again that I was healed. And so it, every time I get that headache, I know to pray for Brother Helm. It's just a great thing. Sign. Dave, Dave. Steve, your, your friend and our dear brother is going to anoint you. And then we'll move to the next prayer. Amen. Praise God. About 10 minutes of office. Yes, thank you. Ruth is going to pray for you, and her daughter will lay hands on you also, and we will agree. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come to thee. Oh, God, praising me and thank you yes, for Lord, yourself. God, yes. Father, we thank you for your uh, wonderful love and your grace. Yes. Jesus, we thank you for your mercy yes. toward us. And, Father, we lift Pastor Steve to thee at this moment. Yes, we Jesus, give him to thee. Pray that you would... Yes. Um, Dear Jesus, that your blood would be applied from his head to his feet. You know, whatever the need is, we pray that you would meet it. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We pray that you would go into the sinus area, Jesus, that you would cleanse, that you would heal, that you would take out all infection and bacteria, Jesus, that is uh, not uh, to be there, Lord. We lift him to thee. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his love toward us and his help, Jesus, for the gifts that you've given him. And Jesus, we pray as he has prayed for many of us, oh God, that you would hear our prayer for him. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. God heard that prayer. He did have it. God's great. Yes, sir. And now for Christopher. Uh, Pastor Dave, where are you? Family? Yes. Uh, family, who would you have to stand here for Christopher? Uh, either Don or one of the children. Don or one of the children. How about you, buddy? Don. Look at him. Don. Uh, you come, son, come right up here for Christopher. Don, would you come close by? Praise the Lord. And he, Excuse me. Now, David, what's on your heart about his friend? All right. We're going to have uh, Don pray a prayer. And we're going to pray for Christopher yes. to be touched of the Lord. Yes. All the way across the ocean, yes. for God's grace. Anything else on anyone's heart? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, Don, you're to pray for Christopher. He is standing in for Christopher. Would you, the oil, did I put it back in my pocket? 
to anoint him. Son, would you anoint him? Would you anoint him? Would you, would you, would you anoint him? Put a little on your finger. Just say, I anoint you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For Christopher. He's anoint his forehead there. And the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit for yeah. Christopher. Amen. All right, Don. Certainly. Next child. Son, you may step right up here. Rachel. Sweetheart, would you come here for a minute? Would you let me put a little oil on your finger? Would you touch his forehead and not say the word? You should anoint him for Gregory. For Gregory. Gregory. Would you say, I anoint you in the name of the Father? I anoint you in the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit for Gregory's healing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don. Yes. Baruch Atah Adonai Elohim. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has kept our lives preserved in the last week's this occasion. Yes. To plead the blood over our hearts and minds and souls. Amen. Each one here. Yes. The reason to unity and agreement together. Amen. Yes. Now by the Holy Spirit and the yes. mercies of God. We yes. thank you, O God, that we can come boldly before the throne of mercy thank and grace, yes. and bleeding the blood of Jesus yes, over these afflictions. Blood. You yes. said that yes. as we came, we can pray for the blind to be able to see, That's right. Right. for the lame to be right. able to walk, That's yes. right. and for the sick mm -hmm. and to afflicted be to be yes. delivered and yes. healed. Yes. Amen. And so we are claiming that Amen. Jesus by faith, yes. believing that yes. thou art able, yes. and you're wanting to do it. Yes. Yes. By revelation, we claim yes. Jesus. Yes. And so we claim for Christopher. Yes. To receive him now that he would touch Receive this, this help, Christopher. Yes. In Jesus' name. He would name. touch him in his body to be made. Yes. <coughs> yes. Well, yes. Made yes. 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 David, would you pray that? Yes. Virginia, want me staying with Joanne? Come right here. Yes. Pastor, yeah. Hager, if we had an opportunity to pray for her daughter-in-law. Who? Hager. For Patty. For Hager. For Hager. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, for this precious Patty. Yes. yes. We pray. Yes. And for? Joanne Ball. For Joanne, Joanne Ball, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. David, yes. would you pray? Yes. Is anything right. on your heart, Bob? Yes, uh, I'd like to stand there for Rita. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, for Rita, we yes. pray. Pastor, God's operating while we're yes. anointing. Yes. Then we'll go up to St. Anne. Father, you uh, came here through Jesus, and there was a multitude of impotent folk. Right. The blind, the halt, the maimed. Lord, we know at that occasion you seem to pick out one, but there were other times the Bible says that you healed Heal them all. Them all. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we come by compassion, yes, by care sir. and love. Yes, and we come, O oh Lord, uh, because of the guidance of the Spirit. That's it. And, Lord, right we pray for each one of these, right for the need of the mind, yes. the soul, yes. the body. Amen. We pray that you would stir your water. Amen. 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 We pray you will stir the them. Get them right into that. May the waters of healing yes. come up upon and over each one of these yes. for whom these are standing. Yes, Father. May they now be whole Father. and well in and healed Jesus. in the name of Jesus, Amen. our Lord. The glory of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've had a wonderful meeting. God's heard and answered prayer. Go in faith. And be careful going back up. We're due at the church right away.
standing for prayer. I <coughs> ask my secretary, John Cannon, to come, please. And uh, I'm going to ask for one of my leaders to lead it. I'm going to ask my secretary to serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Keep right with him.
to welcome you. My name is Derek Cook. I'm the chaplain here in the garden. On a Sunday we have all these seats down here filled with folk from all over the world for our Sunday morning service. And I get the nice job of preaching down there with an empty tomb as my back clock. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You can't improve on that, can you? Yeah. You to do better than that. Right. The uh, English have owned this garden for a hundred years. And what I want to do whilst we have you all together as a group is tell you a bit about the history of it and then for you to have uh, a time of praise and then you'll have a chance to go and look in the tomb for yourself and to go through the gift shop and so on. This area has been a garden since before the time of Jesus. Uh, further up uh, behind you is a water system, a water container. In Israel you will know it only rains in the winter months uh, when uh, tours from the uh, Revival Fellowship sort of come. <laughs> uh, it only rains in the winter months, and then you have to collect your water here and store it for the rest of the other. And we still wouldn't get there.
photograph inside, but you'll appreciate the need to go in sort of 10 or 12 at a time, and then that 12 come out, another 12 go in, and uh, do it quite quickly, just because of the crowds that are around. When you go in, you look on the far wall, you'll stand by the railings, the left-hand segment is the only completed segment of the body of the On the far wall, in the middle, near the sea, very faint now, Any means, he said, I might attain unto the resurrection of life. The reality of all of this is the fact that wherever you are at any time, it's a reality in your heart. Amen. The power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a historical event 2,000 years ago, is still in power, in effect, in the life of the believer. And because he lives, can anybody say amen? Amen! Because he lives, because he lives. He lives. Amen. We live also. Amen. I'll tell you, that's exciting. Yes. To know that, to really believe it. Yes. I'll never forget one Easter morning after I'd been in the ministry several years in Huntington, West Virginia. I woke up on an Easter morning, went out on the sidewalk in front of my house, and suddenly it hit me. He really is alive. Glory! <laughs> Say if God can help you to know that in your heart by revelation, yes, sir. not just I'm alive, my Savior is alive, alive forevermore. The sting of death is o'er, and I in him have everlasting life since Jesus is alive.
friends, Pastor Ronnie Hogue, uh, was here a year ago. Yes. And uh, I, I, I know Scott Depot had a little thing, but I'd like just for bow our head just for one minute and just in silence remember Pastor Ronnie Hogue and his dedication uh, to the Lord, to Brother Helm's ministry, and to this fellowship. So could we bow our heads for just a moment of yes. remembers this yes. great man of God. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Ronnie Hogue. We pray you'd bless his family. Thank you for his dedication and faithfulness in Jesus' name. people, you know. Yeah.